Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today I got a really cool board to show you guys, which is called the PCSF51 from DFI. So let's check it out. Now I do want to thank DFI for sending this over to me and a couple of years ago I did review one of the older boards which is a GHF51 which is classified as the world's smallest Ryzen computer and this is the successor to that using the R2000 series Ryzen embedded chipset. It's called the PCFS51. Now as far as the form factor it's exactly the same size as the old board and similar size to the Raspberry Pi. It houses an AMD Ryzen R2514 embedded chipset, base clock at 2.1 gigahertz and boost up to 3.7. It does have four cores, eight threads. And this particular model has eight gigs of RAM and 128 gigabytes of EMMC. Now it also does have a GPU in here, which is the AMD Vega and it has eight CU clocked at 900 megahertz. And this whole thing is 12 watts. Now I'm gonna emphasize on 12 watts a little bit because this CPU combo actually has the range between 12 watts and 35 watts, which means the TDB can go a lot higher if you program it to be. But DFI does have a clock at 12 watts right now. Now it does come with Windows 10 installed, so I did do some light testing on there and I swapped it over to Linux. I did run Cinebench R20 and it clocked at 906 at 12 watts again. And the EMMC read is 333 and the write is 158, which is honestly pretty good because I've never seen EMMC numbers at 300 range. So it's actually pretty quick for EMMC. Still slower than an SSD, but still. Now, as far as the outside of the board, there's not much connections going on here. You do have two USB 3.1, one Ethernet adapter, and one HDMI. And on top, you get an M.2 E key, which allows you for Wi-Fi and all that other stuff. There are no GPIOs on this. And the power adapter is with this positive and negative right over here. The other limiting factor on this board is the BIOS. I did realize that it doesn't have much options you could change from, especially I can't allocate more VRAM or less VRAM. So you're stuck at two gigs for VRAM and six gigs for the operating system. So there's no way of changing that. Now, I personally like this CPU. I have actually tested their first one, which is the GHF51. And because of that, I actually switched over to a QNAP NAS, which is a Ryzen 1500 series. And it's a workhorse, especially for the multi-core. It does a really good job on my NAS. I actually have a couple of VMs running in there. Uh, heavy, heavy uh, containers, meaning like I got decoders, handbrake, I got some Plex stuff going on. It handles everything so well and such a low power consumption. So being that they are able to fit this much power into such a small form factor is very, very impressive. And if I do see a NAS in the future that has this chipset, I might be upgrading my current one because I really do like the Ryzen embedded chipsets for NASes. Anyway, let's jump to a desktop. All right, so here we are on the desktop of Linux Mint. And what I really wanted to show you guys is the wattage and everything. So anyway, please bear in mind that this fan is really, really loud. It's at a fixed rate of 3000. So if you hear the background noise, it's actually just coming from the device itself. There's nothing I could do about it. Uh, they do offer a heatsink variant, which is a bigger heatsink that you go on without a fan. So it's passively cooled. But uh, yeah, the version I got was with the fan. Anyway, uh, we're going to pop into a utility called Turbo Stat. And TurboStat allows me to read the wattage of the CPU. So right now, let's see if I could put this up to the corner. I am gonna pop open a new window and pop over here. And then uh, another new window because I'm gonna need this in a sec. So let's pop this new window and pop it to the bottom left. Now, because reading TurboStat is kind of hard to read you could see it's like doing five watts it's got more information here that we need so what i'm going to do is actually pipe turbostat into a plotter and here we go that's the command to run uh turbostat uh turbostat into a plot and you can see it's actually doing a minimum of uh or a maximum of this minimum of zero because it's reading throughout the whole graph and it's average 4.3 and it's running around five watts now if i was to use s to UI, which is a stress test utility. Um, this is monitoring the temperatures right now, the core utilization. The frequency doesn't really work, but you could see it's actually zero and 2.1 gigahertz. And you could actually see it on the left. Now, if I run stress, 
you're going to see it only pops up to about 12 watts because it's locked at 12 watts. That's what uh, DFI decides to ship it as. But again, the CPU can go higher. It's, it's, it's rated from between 12 watts to 35 watts. So we can push this board a little bit more. So there's this utility called Ryzen Adjust. And it's similar to the utility you would find a GUI version called Universal X86 Tuning Utility. So I'm going to run this program called Ryzen Adjust. Let me see if I have a build here. Nope. You do have to manually compile it. And here's Ryzen Adjust. And here's the command that I'm going to be running, which uh, sets the A, B, and C to 45 watts instead. Even though it's not going to go that high, uh, I just set it a, little, a lot higher than 12. So as soon as I hit enter on this, it's going to be successful. And you can see the heat instantly pops up. The core frequency automatically goes to 3.1 gigahertz. The wattage is 23.4 watts right now. And you're not going to see 45 because we're not really using the GPU. So this is all CPU, but you could see it does accept higher wattage or higher TDP, which allows you to do more processing. And a huge change if you need to do a multi-core processing like this, with just having this one command. Again, there is a chance it might break your computer, so use at your own risk. But yeah, there is this utility. I do use it for my laptops and now I'm playing around with this, which allows me to uh, up the TDP. Now, as far as the benchmarks goes, with the old settings on Geekbench 5 running on Linux, you can see these are the stats. It's like multi-core is like 1900 something. But as soon as you up the wattage to what I'm doing right now, you can see the new benchmarks are 2600 something, which jumps up about like 700 points for the multi-threading, which is very, very impressive if you need something with multi-core. Now I'm gonna stop the stress test on this and jump it back to monitor mode. You would see this come right back down. Again, the maximum we've seen on this is around 23 or 24 watts. Well, 23.4, that's the max. And testing out the GPU a little, we're gonna put some dead cells on, which plays very good on this machine. And I did get um, Mango HUD working on here. And you can see it's only using about like 50, 60% of the GPU usage. I'm getting 60 frames per second. Uh, it's going above the normal clock in step 2.1. It's already doing 2.8 or something like that. And it runs very, very smooth in this computer. I'm going to jump into a game. And as you can see, super smooth. Let me see if I can find some enemies to kill. I found a pathway here, a teleporter. Uh, okay, I don't need that, man. Look at that, it actually like plays really, really nice on this. Now, if I quit this and jump into another game that actually is more CPU and GPU intensive, I'm gonna show you that in a second, which is Valheim. And you can see it maxed out around like 18 watts before, which wasn't too bad. And let's jump into Valheim over here. And I did set the settings to be as low as possible. So it's got the lowest graphic settings. Um, everything's turned off. Bloom effect. Uh, I do have it in full screen and the resolution is a little bit lower. But ultimately it runs this main screen around 30 frames per second, which is playable. Anything that's 30 frames to me is actually playable because a lot of the Steam Deck games, some of them are locked to 30 frames per second and it's absolutely playable. But you can see, I can load into this world. I'm still doing 30 frames per second. Uh, the GPU is pinned at 99% or say 100. And the megahertz is 900 megahertz. You can overclock the GPU. Um, I only got it up to 1000 megahertz, but I think you go a little bit higher, but I didn't want to push it. And uh, as far as the CPU, it's only running at uh, 1.9 or it's not even reloading. Oh, there you go. Jumped up to 3.6 I saw. But yeah, I'm just going to hang out here waiting until this game loads and you'll see how it performs. It's not great, but it's not bad. It's better than um, Intel 5105 uh, boards uh, with the Intel GPU. So right now it's doing around like 29, 30 frames per second instead of the 20 or 10 or 17 frames you would see on the other game, on the other boards. And here I'm just gonna attack some stuff. 20, this is absolutely like playable. There's no lag and it's around 30 frames per second. 
And it doesn't even run the megahertz all the way up. And as far as the temps go, you could see it hovering around like 58 to 60 uh, degrees. So it's again, not bad at all either for this. Now I couldn't get the wattage to work on Mango HUD. That's because it has to do something with the kernel and you have to install a new thing with DKMS. It's a whole thing just to get the wattage to view on uh, Mango HUD. So instead of doing that, I'd rather just not have it at all. Um, but yeah, let me close this out. And you could see it was pinned around 21 max. So I didn't really necessarily see 45 or 35 like I wanted to, even though I have it set to that rate, but it does bump up to that point. And the gameplay is actually not that bad compared to most um, Intel GPUs. Anyway, that is it for the board. Now, honestly, this is, again, really for industrial purposes, not for consumer purposes, because the price tag on this is a little bit high compared to what you would find on similar boards to do similar things. But again, it's for industrial purposes. They even have a bigger power brick for this reason. Now, for my own purposes, the only thing I could think about using this is really for like transcoding a Plex server or something sort of in the lines of multimedia or transcoding to um, utilize the CPU and the GPU in this type of combo and in this type of form factor. I wouldn't necessarily categorize this as a desktop or um, SBC like you would on a Raspberry Pi because it doesn't have any GPIOs, but it's a pretty cool device. Anyway, that is it for me, guys. If you guys want to see anything particular with this board, let me know down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.